See, most people are not accumulating wealth. Most people are living in poverty. Most people are living far below their potential. Not because they don't have the capacity, not because they have not been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth, but most people are living like they're living because of the fact that they don't believe they can have any more than what they now have. In the book called of Miseducation of the Negro, Dr. Carter G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you'll never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. That's why scripture reminds us, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. That you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking every day. You've got to begin to recondition your mind. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. That was the most difficult part, to believe that given my circumstances, if my birth parents came down this aisle right now, I would not know either one if my daddy came up here or my mother came up here. Given the fact that I was born in an abandoned building on a floor, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, I remember going to see the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, the author of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. And I used to look at him up on stage and I said, I could do that. I would love to talk to people. I love to talk to people. And I said, I could do that. But then when I started going back to my car, my mental conditioning activated itself. And it said, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have the training. You've never worked for a major corporation. You can't do that. What makes you think you can earn five, 10, 15, 20,000 dollars in an hour? You don't earn that now working for two or three months. What makes you think that you can speak for AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, General Electric? These are clients I have now. You've never even worked for them. How many have ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. That inner conversation is what's going to haunt you after standing here and saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. After saying that again and again, we are more than conquerors. That inner conversation will cause you when you leave here to go back leading a life of mediocrity, leading a life of unproductivity, leading a life of poverty. So I'm going to share with you how to break out of that. Whatever it is that you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, here's something that's very key for you. There must be on your part a willingness to do what is required, a willingness. If there are 75 things to do to achieve your goal, if there's one thing on that list of 75 that you're not willing to do, I guarantee you that's the first thing that will come up for you and will kick your butt. See, I always wanted to be a speaker and a trainer. I wanted to make an indelible, indelible impact in the training industry, but I didn't want to be a businessman. I'm a first generation entrepreneur in my family. Because I was told I was dumb and stupid most of my life, I unconsciously developed a tremendous phobia about paper. If you say, let's write me a speech, I automatically become nervous. I can't write you a speech, but I can give you a speech, but I can't write you one. I can't tell you the principles of speaking and what it takes, but I can demonstrate it for you. I can show you how to speak but I can't give you a written explanation for it. I'm not smart like my sister who graduated from the University of Miami, but I have people on my staff with her education that work for me, but I can't write stuff that they write because that's not my area of strength. But so I had a fear. I felt I could not operate a business. And so I wanted to hire a consultant to take care of the details. I had given this consultant power of attorney to sign checks and handle my business. I called my consultant and said, listen, I've thought about this, it's time for me to grow. I've got to be willing to handle my own business. I want to meet with you, I need to develop a working knowledge of this. I've got to stop running from this. I've got to learn, admit my ignorance and decide it doesn't have to be like this for me. To make a long story short, my consultant canceled 14 meetings with me. And when I finally got my books back and have not seen my consultant to this day, 
I knew why. That thousands of funds have been embezzled from my account. Now, whatever happened in our lives, we allow it, we permit it, and we promote it. So it was just an education as my career is going up, not coming down, but it's going up. It was just a tuition I had to pay in the universe because I wasn't willing to learn. I wasn't willing to do that. Now, here's something else that's fascinating. I said, okay, see, if you're not willing to grow in life, life will kick your butt until you surrender. So I said, okay, okay, I'm willing to learn. And here's what I discovered. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. It has blown my mind. I've been running from things that I consider difficult. And if I had known it was it's this simple, I'd have been doing it long before. But I wasn't willing to grow. I wasn't willing. I didn't have the willingness to do everything that was required. And therefore, it kicked my butt. So you've got to decide to grow. See, most people won't, won't try and grow. Now, why, why wasn't I willing to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Because I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to look stupid. I didn't want to admit the fact that I didn't know something. 85% of people in life allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. See, if you know how to do something right, well, it only makes sense to do it right. But see, I wasn't willing to be a businessman badly. See, if you want to make it in life, here's how you can begin to make your goal, ladies and gentlemen. Decide to make your life a great experiment. See, most people want to experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Most people want to be perfect when they come out the gate. Most people want to do things right all the time. You're not going to do everything right. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to have a lot of failures. You're going to have a lot of struggles. You're going to feel dumb and ask questions and don't know what to do or where to go. And that's part of growing. That's part of the experimentation process. See, life is about living. Life is about growing. Life is about challenging self. Life is about stretching. So think about that. Decide to make your life an experiment. Decide to take some chances and come out in the universe and find out what you're made of. Another challenging area in terms of nurturing and developing that hunger in yourself is learning the art of becoming single-minded. Learning how to concentrate. Learning how to focus in. And you'll be surprised at the things that you're able to do. When you learn how to block things out, when you learn how to keep thine eyes single, You'll be surprised of the ideas that will come to you, of the people that you'll be able to attract, of the opportunities that you'll be able to see. You'll begin to see things that have been standing there looking you in the face and saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. Here's a habit that I do. Maybe it might be of some value to you. I get up in the morning and I start writing what great ideas that I can think of. today that can improve me and that will enable me to reach my goal. 
and I just let my mind flow. Sometimes I write 15, 20 ideas. Some days it's more difficult than others. It was Whitney Young, he said, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared.